Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net. You know, there's a ton of ways to locate and buy used outboard, especially if you're shopping on the internet, but you still need to check out that motor and make sure it runs before you fork over any cash. So in this video, let's talk about how you can evaluate a used outboard and make sure you're getting your money's worth. So if you're ready, let's go. Okay guys, so let's be clear about what kind of outboard we're talking about. Say you've gone online and you've looked around and you've settled on a used outboard that the seller says is ready to run. Well, we've all heard that one before. So we're not talking about a fixer upper here because in that case, well, you're kind of going to need to go in knowing it's going to need a bunch of work. No, in this case, you're going to go in with the expectation that you can take this one home, install it on your boat, and you'll be ready to go. Now, the first thing you need to know is, well, will it fit? Motors come in different shaft lengths to accommodate varying transmission heights. So you'll need to know in advance if the motor you're looking at is going to work for your boat. Now, the best way to do this is you want to measure from the top of your transom down to the lowest part of the hull. And that measurement needs to match the measurement on the clamp on the outboard down to the cavitation plate. Now, that's what they call a shaft length. And generally, it is in five inch increments. So those measurements will need to line up to know if the outboard will even work for you without swapping out the midsection and the drive shaft inside. Now, with the fit out of the way, you just want to give the motor a good visual inspection. Now, check out the cowl. Is it in good condition? Is it undamaged? If it looks brand new, it might be worth asking, well, why? And you want to check out the prop. Has it been damaged? Does it have any stuff tangled around the shaft? And does it look new? Or is there a lot of corrosion? If the anodes have been maintained like they should, this shouldn't be an issue. Now, while you're focused in on the lower unit, it's a good time to open up that drain bolt just for a second, because we want to take a look at the oil that's actually inside of it. Now, if it's black, that's a really good sign, because if it's cloudy looking, that means you probably have a seal problem. And if the oil is brand new, well, you can't tell if it's got a leak or not. It could have been changed just the day before. Now you also want to check to see if there's any metal shavings on the drain bolt. Now, every single unit I've worked on, there's going to be a little bit of filings on there just from normal wear and tear. But if it looks excessive, chances are you've got a problem. This is also a good time to ask about the water pump and when the last time it was changed. If the owner can tell you, that might give you a bit of an idea of how well they've taken care of the motor. All right, guys, now that you've given the lower unit a closer inspection, let's turn our attention to the power head. And when you pull the cowl, take a look at the gasket at the base and see that if it's sealed in place. Is it worn out? Because if it is, that means water could have been getting past the cowl and damaging the outside of the engine. Now you want to know more about what's going on on the inside of the engine, and there's three good ways to do that before you actually run it. First, if you're dealing with a four-stroke, pull the dipstick and take a look at the oil. Of course, you want to make sure that there's oil in it, but also, what did it look like? Once again, milky or cloudy oil will be a bad sign. Dark oil is good, and new oil means, well, at least it's been changed recently. Now, the second thing you want to do is pull one of the spark plugs. Now, do they look oily? Do you see any metal shavings on them? Those are really bad signs. Now, if the plugs are dark, that's the indication that the motor may be running a bit rich, and that's not quite the end of the world. Now, a really light plug means the motor has been running lean, and that typically means it's been running a little too hot. Now, third, as you're getting the plugs back in, this is a perfect time to do a compression test. It's probably the single most important thing you can do outside of running it that will tell you the motor is worth the money. And we've got a couple of videos showing you how to do this. Now you're going to need to know a little bit about the specs that are associated with the cylinders on this particular engine that you're looking at. But what you're looking for is consistency. Your numbers may be a little lower than the factory spec because of wear, but don't let that scare you. 
but you don't want your cylinders to vary more than five to 10 PSI in between them because that's a great indicator that something is really wrong. Now that you've inspected it, see if you can go give it a test run if it's still on a boat that you can get out on the water. Great if you can, but if not, put some muffs on it and just run it on land. How easily did it start? Does it crank right up or does it take a bit of work to get it going? How does it run once it gets going? Are you seeing smoke? Smell anything? And one little note I want to make about running them on land with muffs on it. It might run a little bit rougher than it would in the water because there's less back pressure on the exhaust. So you need to keep that in mind. One more thing you may want to consider just from a price standpoint. Will this particular engine have the controls? The controls you have might not work with the motor you're getting, and if they're not compatible and you're not getting the controls with the outboard, that's going to be an additional purchase you're going to have to make before you can get out on the water. All right, guys, that's just a quick peek at some of the things you need to take a look at when buying a used outboard. Now, if you need any parts for your motor, why don't you come see us at boats.net and we can get you taken care of. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, and if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at boats.net and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.